Perky Plains and RC here, operating at 72 megahertz. And got my good old coffee, as well as an engine in a box. Not just any engine, though. This is the FS120 Surpass, uh, the OS one. OS, FS120 Surpass. Uh, let me go ahead and get things out here, guys. Um, <clears throat> I know I haven't featured this guy on the channel in a little while. Um, reason for that is because um, I wanted to... I was doing a, a bearing replacement on... Um, I, of course, I'm going to do a bearing replacement on this guy. But um, I was uh, kind of wanting to do the bearing replacement first on my uh, Super Tiger. Um it's kind of like a test bed. I didn't want to really immediately do it on this guy first. I was like, well, I got the Super Tiger as well. And I'm going to work on, uh, and it, it probably wouldn't hurt to look at it too. So I figured use the Super Tiger two stroke as, um, as my test bed for replacing the bearings, just to kind of get a feel for it and all that stuff before I crack into this guy here. Um, now I had in the meantime, sort of taken things apart and got things separated in the little baggies. Um, I surely hope I can remember how it all goes back together. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'll be fine. Um, uh, something about the, the Surpass, uh, and actually the Super Tiger was like this too. It actually did come with a, like an onboard glow igniter, which uh, it actually came apart as I was taking it apart. So uh, I'm going to probably end up replacing it or trying to repair what's existing. We'll see, we'll see what happens on that. But, uh, you know, there's some of the other pieces there. There's the uh, valve cover. Um, of course, you've got your muffler. Um uh, here's, the, of course, the prop, the prop uh, nut washer, whatever they call that thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, I think those are the mounting screws. Um, of course, here is part of the, uh, the carb and pump assembly. Uh, this is the first four-stroke I've had, so this a lot of this is, like, brand new to me. So, um, you know, it's, it's going to be a learning experience for sure. Uh, this is the prop spinner and um, another part of the, uh, the tubing there as well. Um, here is the, the, the actual valve top part of the head. Um, and uh, that'll lead me to my next thing there too, is the piston sleeve. Uh, so I had actually gotten this thing apart. Um, I'd actually got most of it apart earlier, uh, here recently I did, did, uh, dig it back out and, uh, started trying to dig more into getting to the bearings, basically, and, um, I was able to get the piston sleeve out, which you see there, uh, kind of like the Super Tiger, I applied some heat to it and, you know, it, you know, got to come out, um, Mm, excuse me. It was actually much easier to take out than the Super Tiger was, um, and I don't think that was—I um, don't think that was experienced because of me doing the Super Tiger. I think a lot of that, honestly, was it was just easier to get out. I mean, it literally a little bit of heat and like it slid out like you would not believe. I mean, it just. I mean, I could have probably tapped it a couple times and it just would have fallen out. But, uh, yeah, it was super easy to remove. Um, the Super Tiger, um, like I said, it, it was one of those ones where I had to heat it up and oil it and heat it up and oil it and heat it up and oil it. And with some tugging, tw tugging and twisting, it eventually came, came all the way out. So, anyways, that's where we're at with the Surpass. Um, and guess what? Um... Uh, how the, you know, the, the Super Tiger had struggle written on it. This guy's got the word stuck written on it. And I'll tell you why. So initially when I got the, or initially when I got the engine, it was locked up like you wouldn't believe. Um, I had soaked it, of course, you know, for, for days in, in like a, um, I think it was a glow fuel and transmission fluid mix. Um, <clears throat> I had, um, um, 
I think I applied some heat to it and, and lubed it up as much as I could. Eventually got it unstuck. And, um, and, uh, so, you know, and then right now we're stuck again on something else. So, um, oh, oh, um, the, uh, the valves were, once, once I got the actual, um, uh, shaft actually spinning, uh, I then realized that the valves seemed a little stuck. So I had to oil them up, lube them up and eventually got them in, in a little better condition. Um, I'll probably still give them a little more attention too. um, in fact, let me get those out and show you. Um, I mean, I think I'm doing much better now. However, um, I mean, I still think we need to, like I said, just give it some more attention. So, I mean, it's, they're moving. But, uh, yeah, I didn't think it was too bad. I even soaked this guy in, um, Oh, uh, I'm trying to think here. I think I did the uh, the antifreeze uh, crock pot thing with this too. To even try to help clean it and lube it up a little bit. Um, it probably could use some more attention as well. I'm really not <clears throat> kind of in the mindset to actually want to clean it real bad because I didn't think it was that bad as far as the how dirty it was. I mean, this is this this is just from the soaking it's been in. There's, I've been I didn't really use any kind of cleaning on it or anything like that. Um, outside of what I've mentioned, so just the, the oil, low fuel, or the, um, transmission fluid, uh, glow fuel mix, and then the trans, or then the, um, the antifreeze, I mean, that's all this thing's been soaking in, so, but that's, it really is not that dirty, I don't think, so I'm not really as much focused on getting, getting it clean and pristine or anything, so, but anyways, um, let's get back to what I was talking about. I'm stuck once again, and let me tell you why. Um, oh, actually, I wanted to tell you. I wanted to show you this here too as well. Um, I honestly think, and like I said, I'm, I'm pretty new to this and, and and all that, but after looking at this thing, I just really think this is a low runtime engine. I really do. Um, I mean, the piston. I mean, it did not. I mean, you know, granted, it's been soaking and stuff, but it did not actually look much dirtier than that uh, and maybe four strokes don't appear as dirty as others I, I don't know you all can tell me that um, you, know, you guys can kind of educate this newbie here on that but um, like I said this right here I mean I think I wiped off a little bit but it really truly was not much dirtier than that so I don't think this thing's been run a whole lot um, I mean, I can tell the Super Tiger was run quite a bit, but the uh, but this guy, I don't think has been run run a whole lot. So, <clears throat> but anyways, where I'm stuck, let me get back to that. I keep getting sidetracked here. Um, and I think this is like the place to get stuck at, and that is, as I've learned, this uh, this wrist pin here. Yeah, you know, my Super Tiger, I could just you know once I got the. Um, once I got the sleeve out and all that kind of stuff, you know, I could just, you know, take off the, you know, get the piston rod right off the the, uh, the shaft there, and then boom, it comes right apart. This guy's not like that. I've got this uh, this wrist pin, apparently, that is sort of locking things in place, and um, so that's kind of where I'm at. I haven't applied any heat to this yet. I have been trying to pull it, tug it a little bit here and there, just to see if it would come out. I'm not, I'm not putting a lot of force on it. I'm really trying not to. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm kind of stuck on that part right there. Once I get to that, or if I can get that to come out, then, um, then I can get to the bearings and replace those, which speaking of bearings, um, kind of like a little preliminary, well, kind of like a, uh, pre-announcement to the bearings. This is the bearings that I, I had picked out for this. And apparently this is a good company because um, they sell a lot of these things. And of course their name is, you know, bearings, like on the, in, the, in the actual company name. So they specialize in bearings. So I picked out some fast eddy bearings to use in it. Uh, and actually I love the little logo of the guy here, the little pilot it looks like. Um, I think that kind of got my attention as well. I was like, eh, I like this. looks pretty cool. So I got some fast Eddie bearings. Um, says they'll fit this guy, so we'll 
we'll put those in. Um, but uh, yeah, anyways, that's where I'm stuck at with this guy right now. Like I said, once I get past that point, then I can uh, replace the bearings and then put it all back together in hopes that I put it back together the same way. Um, so we'll kind of see what happens. Uh, that's where I'm at right now with it. Um, I will share more information, or I'm, I'll definitely share more information as I get to that point. Uh, I'm going to probably go pop this thing in the oven uh, or the heat gun. And, or you know, like, or do the heat gun to it, and um, see if I can get that thing to budge. I would, I mean, I really don't know what 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 it's even made of. So, I mean, is it a metal piece? Is it a? I mean, it almost looks plastic to me or something. So, if I can get that little piece out of there, then uh, we can proceed with getting the bearings replaced, and. Um, so we'll kind of hope for the best. Um, where it is a load runtime engine, it may not need new bearings. Um, however, I had some folks online after I kind of get the, got the thing, um, when I kind of got the thing uh, unstuck a little bit, they were like, oh, you better replace the bearings in that thing. So um, we'll see. But I mean, I definitely, I mean, to me, bearings is like a an important and cheap investment because, you know, it could... Even even if those bearings are okay, um, you know they they've still got some use on them and stuff. So, um, but like I said, it's an important and cheap investment. So, and if it's a uh, and if it's something else to help prolong the life of this thing, I'll go ahead and do it. But uh, you know, like I said, I, and this thing's probably been. I think honestly, what's happened with this one is it has been it has been run. However much I don't know, uh, I don't think a whole lot. Um, and I think it has been stored, and I, I don't know if it was, I don't think it was properly stored, but that's okay, because I, I think the guy that uh, we got this from, I think he had some health issues and ended up passing away, uh, Bob, as you've heard me mention about, but uh, I think it just got put away at a time and wasn't stored properly, and he may have had some health problems or something like that, and it just sat, and basically, you know, kind of locked itself up, so, but, uh, hoping to kind of free it up and, uh, well, free it up, give it some, give it some TLC, and, and get it back to use again. So, but uh, anyways, that's where I'm at with it. Like I said, here in a minute, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, give it some heat and uh, see if I can get that little, that little, uh, little guy out of there, so I can get the piston out, and then get a good look at the, get a good look and feel at the bearings and see how they are. And I'll probably still, like I said, like I said, I'll probably still just go ahead and replace them. Um, and, uh, that way I, you know, have that sort of peace of mind kind of thing. Uh, something else that kind of came up too is, um, um, I, I feel like the more I unstuck the thing, the less, the less it felt, felt on the compression side of things. So it really didn't feel like it had some, like after it kind of got freed, it's like it just sort of spun. It didn't really have a good compression kind of feel to it at all it just kind of gradually went away so uh maybe that's how it's supposed to be i, I would think it should have some compression though but um yeah that might be something to look at as well as we kind of get it apart um and like I said, maybe it's just how it is i don't know but anyways guys just wanted to let you know that it's uh, it's still out there and this is where i'm at with it um so once i get that little wrist pin thingy out of there, then uh, I can then proceed with getting the, the rest of the maintenance done to it and then get it fired back up. And we'll see what happens. Alright guys, well, I um, do want to thank you all for watching. Hey, a uh, quick update. So I have been working with this. Um, we're still stuck, but lucky there. Um, I actually have followed uh, David. I want to thank you for for saving me here. I did look and, and find a video on the wrist pin removal, and um, he recommended a uh, like a small uh, screw. Which uh, let me show you guys here what, uh, what I got. Oh. Uh, use a small uh, screw to basically go in there, thread it into that, and then pop that guy out. So. We're making progress. Uh, I was able to get that piece out pretty easily. Um, once I threaded it in, 
couple good tugs and I eventually it came out. Um, right now I'm kind of working on getting the uh, the rest of it out. There is another piece in there apparently that uh, I've been trying with a kind of like a threaded wood screw like you were saying David and then uh, and then also applying some heat. I got my heat gun here uh, as well as some uh, three and one oil too to help try, try and lubricate it too. I uh, haven't had any luck with that yet, but uh, we're trying. I'll, I'll give it another try and see if I get any luck with it. Watch it'll happen. Yeah, it's holding, definitely holding better than that, that, that time. Nah, it's still nothing. Yeah. I'll still keep fighting the good fight here, but uh, that's the last piece that needs to come out before I get the uh, the piston rod and all that stuff out. So, but anyways, we're getting there.